So it was three months into signing a contract and I'm finally going to meet my builder face to face after just conversations on the phone. And we're talking over my barren property where uh, our foundation was pretty much just uh, cleared off and nothing had happened. 90 days into the project and there's not much to show for it. He leans down and he picks up this nail and he looks at it and he says this will never happen on my job site. I run a tight ship here. And he went on and on about uh, his quality and workmanship. My friend John and I would laugh about this moment from time to time and we still do today. Because he was far from uh, running a tight ship on the job site and it wasn't very neat there. It was actually kind of sloppy. And if you look, there should be a dumpster part there to take all the construction garbage and paper and wrappings. And it just ended up being a big pile of mess off to the side, right to the right of the porta potty, you see it. And um, that was another hint that this build was not going to go as smoothly as I wanted it to. So let's pick up where we left off, and that was with the hot tub that was finally delivered to the job site. It was never put on the porch like I wanted it to prior to the framing, and now we got to figure a way of getting it into the house and onto the porch, and hopefully without using a crane. Come check it out. One of the first things we had to do was clean all the water out of it that had accumulated from the shrink wrap being busted, and every time it rained it would accumulate a little bit more water, and not clean water at that. I used a bucket and a, a towel and kind of just got all the water out the old-fashioned way, wringing out a towel and as much as I get into the bucket and we cleaned it up a little bit the best we could. Then we embarked on the project of how to get this thing into the cabin, similar to moving the pyramids. So we put some rails, we started um, leveling out the dirt a little bit and those two planks are going to be the things that we walk on and then we're going to put the, the weight of the hot tub on the rails itself. So being that there's very little friction just on the two rails, the hot tub actually moved quite easily and it wasn't hard to move it six inches at a time and just give it a little push. We were trying not to do any damage to anything, we didn't want any catastrophes to happen, so we just took our time getting this thing up to the to porch. So we're getting to the point where we're going to have to do a little bit of elevation gain to get it on top of the porch. And it's really not going too bad, we're just going maybe about three or four inches at a time, just kind of pushing it on both sides. We're balanced on the two planks in the middle, and it really kind of went up kind of easy. Since our visits here in the fall, October and November, we came pretty acquainted with the two carpenters that have been working here on a daily basis. They especially like how we would clean up after them at the end of the day. But we commandeered them to help us get this hot tub on its side. And then their next job was to try to get it into the door. We purposely left out the pantry in the kitchen so we would have room to go straight back. And we were a little concerned that the wall of the kitchen might not be deep enough away from the door for us to make the turn for this hot tub. We really didn't have a millimeter to spare and it came inside. We put it on my Harbor Freight um, dollies that I had brought with me for moving some other stuff around. Got it to the other door which leads to the porch and those doors are supposed to be the same size as our side door, 36 inches wide, but for some reason that door seemed smaller. So at this time our general contractor had showed up and my brother-in-law who was allowing us to stay in our timeshare he also came to see what was going on and we commandeered them along with the two carpenters and we started pushing to get this thing out into the porch and it was a much tighter fit than the uh, side door that we had to go into and I could have swore that I could have heard a sound when it finally started making some headway. I don't think it could have been any tighter without having to take the door frame out to get this thing out on the porch. Once we got it out there, I got the hose out, I hosed it down, cleaned it out, scrubbed it really good, got all the dirt, fleshed out all the jets, I put the cover on it, we sealed it up, and now it's just waiting for the electrician to hook it up. That was a load off my mind, now we could concentrate on working on the inside, setting the vanities. I have another heavy project that we want to do before we put a railing up in the loft, and that's put the pool table up. We again assembled a contraption of ladders, ropes, and a little bit of scaffolding. Got the pool table up there, assembled, put together, and that was another heavy duty job that we got taken off of our list. 
The hours are going by way too fast and the next project is working on the fireplace. This was the mantle that I made for it back in Ohio and then stored here in Tennessee for the last six months. We got an electrician back here because there were a lot of mistakes where some of the switches and outlets and even the boxes for the lights. Like for our dining room table, it was off by six feet of where we wanted it. There were certain parts in the loft where there wasn't even a box put for a ceiling fan and it had already had the tongue and groove put in there and we made them put a box and have to fish wire down through the finished ceiling material. We ran out of time once again, had to leave, and our next trip I'm coming with Karen and hopefully we're going to have heat, running water, septic, and all the comforts of home. It is now December, Karen and I have come here, and you guessed it, there's no septic, there's no heat, and the electric is still off of the temporary pole. We do have water though. As always with our trips, we immediately went to work. We kind of set up the bedroom. I brought a space heater and we can run an extension cord to it so we can at least heat one room while we're there. In the meantime, for us and the dog. And then we started cleaning. The mud was terrible inside from all the people coming in and out, that red clayish mud. We probably washed that floor 10 times literally until we started just dumping buckets of water on top of it and sucking it up with a shop bin. This was an encouraging moment though. We had the propane delivery truck come and they set up a propane tank near the side of the cabin and hooked it up to the fireplace and that's sufficient enough to heat the whole cabin if need be which it did so I noticed a pattern that when we're not there things go at a snail's pace but when we show up things happen pretty quick and it was a flurry of activity we got electric established on the inside we got the septic hooked up and we got all the pertinent niceties of home the following day it's been quite chilly this trip, which is a little unusual for this area of Tennessee, especially in early December. One thing we noticed when we turned on the furnace for the heat is that there were a couple of rooms that didn't have the registers cut out where there were vents. I took the liberty of cutting those out in the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. We're adding some decor and things are starting to come together and it's really starting to look like a nice cabin. Being eight hours away, our days are always full of activity from sunup to sundown. There were two projects especially suited for Karen. One was fastening the countertop down to the cabinets in the back corner, which was a pretty tight fit. And the other was to put the dryer vent hose behind the washer-dryer combo. It is now the end of December. We came right after Christmas, just before New Year's. A couple finishing touches, adding some more decor, putting up some blinds, filling up the hot tub, testing things out. And we're at the point of assembling this cabin to where it's kind of the fun part. It's not too stressful and it's on our own terms. They're still waiting for a final inspection. I'm going to have one more trip with my friends to come down here and do some larger projects before we officially put it back on the market. But so far everything is looking good now. It's now January. I've come down here with my two friends Don and John. There's some larger projects, cutting down some trees. Um, one thing that aggravated me a heck of a lot was they left the stickers on the windows and those were such a pain to get off using a razor blade and window cleaner. And a lot of these windows were pretty unreachable. Also noticed when we were cleaning that, the one carpenter was using a kerosene heater, only he wasn't burning kerosene, he was burning diesel fuel to heat inside the cabin when he was working. And that left like a dark sooty film on just about everything and we had to wash down all the walls and windows and all the fixtures. While I had the two guys down here, I wanted to cut down some of the dead trees that never survived the fire. Some of them looked like they might have come back and we gave it uh, almost a year and they just weren't going to make it. So we wanted to take these down before we got things up and running officially. Not to mention we cut up some of the tree trunks and took some of the scraps and we kind of used them for end tables on the porch which was kind of a nice touch and kind of a reminder of the fires and we saved a little money not having to buy some treated wood for fencing. Now that we have the internet up and running I can also install our security camera system which kind of just gives us four views of the outside of the cabin, mainly the parking area and of course looking out over the mountains. 
Well, you're probably never all done, but we're as close to being all done as we can. We're going to open up the VRBO site and start re-renting the cabin on the rental market. We've come a long way since we purchased this back in 2015. This is how the cabin basically looked pre-fires. Here's the living room pre-fires and post. So I can definitely tell you that having this new cabin is certainly a lot better than having the old one. The old one had its characters and I would not wish anybody to go through what we did that we had to rebuild this thing. But in the long run we are better off. During the build it was terrible. The old cabin did have its issues and we had a laundry list of items that we were going to do with it. We initially put $40,000 into the old cabin when we first bought it. And that got us a good head start on things. Now we're of course in good shape. Back in 2015 when we first purchased the old cabin, we paid $145 for it. We put $40,000 into it to kind of refurbish it. It cost us about $260,000 to rebuild the cabin after the fires. So we're still trying to recoup some of our money. The cabin is doing well. And we'll continue to make improvements just like anybody else does with their home. One of the things I wanted to do right off the bat was get a set of stairs so we could get down in the basement a lot easier. And that was one of the first projects that post starting to rent that we started doing. It was well worth it and it's a lot easier to access the basement now, carry things up and down, get the Christmas decorations. And I even set up a little workshop down there with a workbench and a table saw for future projects. Another thing we needed to take care of was staining all the treated wood that was seasoned now after a little while, taking care of the railings and the floors of the porches. Each subsequent trip always has a project for us to take care of or something that needs to be addressed in a timely manner. And that's just typical for anybody that owns a home or for anybody that has these vacation rental properties. We enjoy managing the rental property ourselves, and in turn, we get to keep a little bit more than if someone else were to manage it for us. We also are very responsive to the people we rent to, so much so that in our VRBO ranking, out of 9,500 cabins in our area, we are ranked number one. And we had a really good ranking prior to the fires also, so I was glad that we could get back to this point again. As this video started earlier, I was at the Chimney Tops Trail, and this is where we're going to end it. So if you go visit the Chimney Tops Trail, you're going to be hit with a warning that you cannot go any further to make it to the actual peak of Chimney Tops. Due to the destructive nature of the fire up there, things are just too unstable and too dangerous to walk on loose rocks. Um, no more trees or foliage, the whole thing's in place. And it's said by the Park Service that it's going to be several decades by the time this trail is reopened to that peak again. And it's probably not going to be open in my lifetime. It is such a shame that these two kids created such a chain reaction that affected so many people and did so much damage to property and nature. And even though that you can't do the last 2,000 feet of the trail, it's still a great place to go up there, get some fresh air, see some beauty, take it all in. I'd be thankful. I appreciate everybody watching these videos. I hope you subscribe. I hope you enjoy them. Click on that like button if you have a chance. And keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.